Let's prove these elementary derivatives and then remember them and apply them. So the left hand side can be written as follows using the definition of the derivative. And using the addition trig identity, we can write the first term as follows. And now we can do a bit of factorization and apply the limit rules. Then we can split these up in two and evaluate them individually using the limit rules. So recall that this limit here evaluates to zero as we've proven previously. And this limit here evaluates to one. So therefore the derivative of cosine x is minus sine x. Let's prove the derivative of sine x and there's another elementary derivative that we'll remember. So using the definition of the derivative, and now using the addition trig identity, we can simplify the first term as follows. And now we can do some factorization to split these limits into two. And we've shown previously that this limit evaluates to zero, and this one here evaluates to one as h approaches zero. So we basically split these into two limits using the limit rules. And therefore the derivative of sine x is cosine x. Let's use the definition to prove the derivative of e to the x. So we have the limit as h goes to zero of e to the x plus h minus e to the x on h. And now we can do a bit of algebra to factor out e to the x. So we have e to the x by e to the h minus one on h. And now letting u equal e to the h minus one. So we can add one to both sides and take the natural log. So that gives the natural log of u plus one is equal to h. And now we can take out e to the x outside the limit. And we have the limit as h approaches zero. So by this expression, when h goes to zero, u goes to zero. And then we have u in the numerator over h, which is the natural log of u plus one. And we can see that this is the limit of zero on zero. So we can use Halhapital's rule to differentiate the numerator and denominator and taking the limit, you can verify that this is equal to one. And that shows that the derivative is equal to e to the x. Let's prove the derivative of the natural log of x using the definition. So we take the limit as h goes to zero of the natural log of x plus h minus the natural log of x over h. And using the rules for logarithms, we take the limit as h goes to zero of the natural log of x plus h on x. So that would be one plus h on x on h. And now we can use a change of variables. So if we let u equal h on x, well that implies that one on h is equal to one on x by u. And now we can change the limit. So we have the limit as h goes to zero, so when h goes to zero, u goes to zero, and we can substitute for one on h, so take one on x outside the limit, and keep one on u inside the limit. And in the numerator, we have the natural log of one plus u. And this is a limit of zero on zero, so by Al-Hopital's rule, this here evaluates to one, and that proves our derivative.